This is the all new 2022 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. And we're gonna drive it right now on Driving Sports TV. So we now need to jump into one of the Tundras, but which one do we go with? Uh, do we go with the 1794 or possibly a Platinum, maybe an SR5? Oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna do this one right here, a TRD Pro. You can tell it's a TRD Pro from the grill. They have that light insert. I really like this textured pattern there. That's kind of cool. While I'm getting settled in, let's review some of the key features of Toyota's all-new full-size truck. The 2022 Tundra features improvements in both hardware and software. The frame is a high-strength box steel ladder design. The bed is aluminum-reinforced composite. Double cab models are either available with a 6.5-foot bed or an 8.1. Crewmax get either a 5.5 or 6.5-foot bed. Only two engines will be offered. Lower trims will come standard with a twin turbocharged 3.5 liter V6 that makes up to 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque on 87 octane fuel. Select upper and TRD Pro trims come standard with a parallel hybrid assist motor integrated between the engine and transmission, powered by a bank of nickel metal hydride batteries located under the second row. This system boosts power to an impressive 437 horses and 583 pound-feet of torque. Both setups are mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission. Two- and four-wheel drive models are available. Toyota has gotten rid of the old leaf spring rear suspension and replaced it with a modern multi-link design to improve stability and comfort. Self-leveling rear suspension is now available on select trims, as is adaptive variable suspension. With that all covered, now let's go back to San Antonio and begin the journey. We are inside the TRD Pro Tundra. This is the one I wanted to get into. Now these press events are always interesting because it's kind of a free for all as to what truck you end up getting because they only have a limited number of trucks. So uh, to recap a few things, there's no pricing on this yet. I don't even know what the MPGs will do. Uh, the TRD Pro, however, will be exclusively available with the hybrid engine. That's right, it's a turbocharged V6 with a hybrid. Maximum towing capacity on these guys is 12,000 pounds. However, once you um, add in the weight of the hybrid drivetrain and the batteries, that does eat into that. So um, actually the hybrids have a slightly lower payload and towing capacity simply because they weigh more. Initial impressions, very cool. I love this digital gauge cluster. It is so high resolution and it's nicely designed. It's a very, very uh, useful looking piece of equipment there. Looking around the cabin here, we have this big, massive center thing, which has USB sockets. I couldn't find any 12 volt sockets. I believe this doesn't have any. Moving on down, we have a rear locker because this is a TRD Pro. In fact, any of the TRD off-road packages that you can add to a vehicle will include the rear locker as well as crawl control. So instead where you had to use knobs up above, uh, it's now all in one dial down here. I kind of like the big knobs, but you know, this is fine. And then we have a dual range transfer case, which will switch between two high, four high, and four low. Um, noticeably absent is a four auto setting, which you're starting to see in other vehicles. And Toyota does have that in their catalog because of course they make the Land Cruiser, which the Land Cruiser has a center locking differential for full-time four wheel drive. Uh, this does not have that. In the middle here, we of course have a 14 inch navigation system with infotainment. And I have used this system before on the Lexus NX. That was the first vehicle I drove that had it. With that system, one of the, my concerns is the fact that navigation is the home screen. There's no like multi-module system so I can see my you know, music and navigation and other items all at the same time. Here, you have to switch through all the different options. And you know, that works, I guess. There's a little charging pad down here. We're gonna connect a device, manage device, add another device, search for devices. I'm gonna to go to Bluetooth, 
Go to the very bottom, I have all these different cars I've tested. Use CarPlay, set as primary device, yes. Enable CarPlay, yes. And boom, there we go. And we got CarPlay. Nice, big, beautiful colors. I love the panel here. And see, that's what a multifunction interface looks like. Music, quick links, and navigation. They need to add that to the Toyota system, um, I guess in time. Anyway, we got a big day planned for today. Uh, we're gonna drive this vehicle out to a preserve where we're gonna do some off-roading. And we're gonna start with navigating to the preserve. And how do we put that information into the system? Well, they've already called the preserve home. So, hey, Toyota, bring me home. I found 14400 Farm to Market Road 306. Would you like to go now? Yes. Calculating route to 14400 Farm to Market Road 306. And there we go. Let's go home. Proceed to the highlighted route. Actually, I really like the feel of this shifter. Because of the stitching, it almost feels like finger patterns. They just kind of dig in there. Well, let's turn off that camera so I can see where navigation's taking me. So this is, of course, a half-ton truck, which means it is a big piece of metal on the road. Get turn left ahead onto Auditorium Circle, and then turn right at the end of the road onto Navarro Street. Yes, ma'am. Which means navigating the city streets is a little on the tight side. Turn right at the end of the road onto Navarro Street. You know, on these bumpy roads, and this is kind of like a cobblestone road with a bunch of ditches and stuff in it, uh, potholes. And uh, I have to say, immediately that coil spring suspension, I feel it. It feels so much better than the old leaf spring design. And that, I'm not just talking about Tundras, I'm just talking about trucks in general. Not too long ago, I took the Ford F-150 hybrid, which does have traditional leaf springs in the back, up to a mountain pass and that thing was so bouncy it was really tough uh, to be comfortable in that vehicle but here with the new suspension setup yeah it's actually really nice navigation is nicely integrated into the digital gauge cluster even in my forerunner it has the same exact little sub display although in the forerunner it's just a little digital screen the whole thing isn't digital what does this change with different drive modes so we can switch between sport ooh, cool graphics normal and eco. Let's start with sport mode. I think I'm Next just... right onto East Quincy Street. Ooh, and yeah. Take the ramp. Feel on power the right kick in. Onto I-35 North. Feels pretty good actually. One thing that's really nice about hybrid powertrains is they really help kind of especially when paired with a turbo engine, they really add that extra torque to the low range because of course as anybody who's driven a hybrid or an electric knows, you get 100% of torque at zero RPM with an electric motor. And so it really fills in that gap before the turbos kick in. Oh, hey, while we're here, let's test out the standard Safety Sense 2.5. Um, all Toyotas these days are coming with uh, Safety Sense. This one has the newest version, which is the 2.5 edition. That includes lane detection, lane centering, adaptive cruise control, uh, collision mitigation. Um, blind spot warning is an option. Uh, the base trims don't have it. This one does have it. And of course, you get a rear camera with surround view and backup um, alerts as well. So let's go ahead and hit set on the cruise control system. So turn it on, hit set increase speed now here i set my target speed i'm setting it to 70 miles an hour i'm pacing the vehicle in front of me which is doing 65 and i want to make sure that i have lane detection turned on with active steering assist great now let me take my hands off and it is tracking in the middle of the lanes this is exactly what we want to see and we're even going to go around this curve slightly and see how well it tracks doing pretty good it's now telling me to put my hands back on the wheel so I'm gonna do that right the seat is very comfortable how many adjustments do I get here I got a few adjustments I have front back up down seat back I have ooh, oh that's a really nice uh, lower bolstering uh, control but I do have both heat and ventilation on the seats uh, which is a nice add 
As for this red interior, it's not as garish looking as it looks in photographs. In photographs, it's kind of like, oh boy, that's, that's really red. Not a huge fan of the red, honestly, but I, I would not not get this vehicle because of the interior color. But I love this. This feels like a modern truck, and it's not very often you can say that about a Toyota. Hey, Toyota, add a stop at Starbucks for me. I found six results along your route. The Sweet. First I found Deli K Sweets. Would you like oh. to add it? <laughs> I need to be careful what I say because Toyota is listening. Hey, Toyota, add a Starbucks stop. I found six results along your route. The first is Starbucks at 49. Great. Now I can just tap it and we can move along. Hey, Toyota, remove my Starbucks stop. I'm sorry. I don't support removing stops by name right now. So you, you, so you can add a stop, but you can't remove a stop. But she has the logic to tell you that she cannot remove the stop. Why can't you just remove the stop? Overall on the freeway, very nice vehicle to drive. I like the navigation system. It's bold, it's pretty, and it seems pretty functional. Now, the thing to keep in mind with this system, it's a 1.0. This is just the start of their system. Obviously, they're gonna add to it. They're gonna build more capability into it. Um, it's based on Linux, so they can go in and really change a lot of stuff. And it is interesting that it's built here in the United States. This is designed in their Plano R&D Center. Um, so it is, in fact, this entire truck is a US designed truck. It was designed in California and Michigan, and it's being built right here in San Antonio. Everything about this truck is American. So now we're gonna keep on going down the freeway. I got another 30 minutes of driving here. I'll report in before I get off and before we hit the off-road course. So traffic has slowed down and now we have an opportunity to see just how well this uh, adaptive cruise control works in stop and go situations. Creeping really slow. We're definitely sticking at 20 miles an hour. Come on system, what are you gonna do? Okay, we're gonna come to a complete stop. Now what happens when we hit a complete stop here? We are gonna hit a complete stop. Okay, we slow down so the uh, surround camera automatically turns on. We're at four miles an hour. Oh, didn't stop completely, but I, I haven't touched anything. We're just letting the car do it and we're accelerating back up to speed. This is really nice actually for stop and go traffic. Um, you don't have to be constantly you know, moving your foot around. You can just kind of sit back, relax, enjoy the drive. So as for seat comfort, it's been in here for about 20, 30 minutes and it's still really comfortable. Um, I would like a little bit more lateral support, you know, bigger bolstering on the, uh, on the uh, lumbar would be kind of nice, but overall, very comfortable. I can imagine big guys would fit in here just fine. I'm six foot one, legs torso proportionate, and it feels really good. So the vehicles that we're driving today are all pre-production, and these are early pre-production units, some of which have some little unfinished bits and pieces here and there. We're not gonna, you know, fixate on those because again, early pre-production units. Uh, final production units are expected to be just fine. Uh, but uh, it's kind of amusing, so if anything like falls down or falls off, um, we'll know why. In sport mode when I punch it, power's pretty quick. Um, it's good enough, you know, it's, it's a big half-ton pickup. This isn't like, you know, a sports car, so let's be realistic with the expectations here. This thing is about torque and uh, stump pulling. It's not about racing on the freeway. <laughs> but that's all stuff you already know, I'm sure. I do like the feel of the steering wheel. It has this dotted leather, big TRD down below. Feels serious, but also quite comfortable. Next left, onto FM 306. It's time to try a zero to 60. I'm gonna to come to a complete stop. We're in sport mode. And drive, put the transmission in sport. Three, two, one, go. Little chirp off the line. And 
60 in 6.58 seconds. I think that's actually pretty good for a vehicle of this size. Okay. It's right in off. half of a mile, your destination is ahead on the right. Thank you, ma'am. Set my temperature to 68 degrees. This feature is not available. Really? Huh, interesting. So the Lexus will let you do it, but this one will not. Interesting. Okay, we are going into the preserve. I wonder what this is. Before heading into the trail, let's check out what makes this TRD Pro uniquely suited to the rigors of off-road driving. Up front, it gets upgraded 2.5-inch Fox shocks. These feature an internal bypass design and also provide for a 1.1-inch front lift, which helps boost ground clearance half an inch to 9 inches overall. TRD Pro models also get a unique front stabilizer, aluminum front skid plate along with additional underbody protection, and Falcon Wild Peak tires. All trims get a unique grille design, with the TRD Pro model also getting bonus accent lights underneath the name badge. Interior colors are either red, like our test car here, but if that's not to your liking, you can also get it in black. The TRD Pro now comes with an updated version of Toyota's multi-terrain select and crawl control systems. If you love the old clanking noises, that is now a thing of the past, as you'll see in a little bit. A locking rear differential comes on all TRD Pro and TRD off-road packaged vehicles. Though not quite related to the off-road features, the bed is composite with integrated tie-down rails and AC power. The fan favorite slide down rear window is also still here. Okay. Ah. Yeah, up in the second row, I love this huge panorama sunroof. I got headroom, I got lots of leg room. I am six foot one, legs torso proportionate, and I fit with just a massive amount of space here. I also get two USB sockets and an AC, which is a 400 watt uh, output. Nice. Anything else here? Oh, we got my little LED lights and cup holders in an armrest. Even though this is a hybrid powertrain, it still makes engine noises. Let's listen to the exhaust. Okay, now that we covered all of those details, let's take it for an off-road drive. Now to prep it, they say this course requires four low, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch into four low, and now it shifts, BSC is turned off, and I immediately get my off-road display, which is very cool. So manufacturer supplied courses are usually a bit on the easy side. So my expectations here are that we'll be able to test out some features and just see what they do. Later, I will try to get one that we can test on our own private test hill where I have more control over the challenges that we'll be facing. Now, the tires on here are Falcon Wild Peaks, which I rather like. They're a great compromised tire in terms of they're really good off-road and really quiet on sealed surfaces. Uh, they're just a great tire all around. It's not like KO2s, which turn into hockey pucks when it gets cold out. Um, they also work well in cold weather, and uh, they are peak rated uh, to be winter tires. Though not as good as a dedicated snow tire, of course. But sometimes, if you only have a little snow in your life, it's kind of nice to have something like that. Let's go ahead and switch this into crawl control. It's gonna switch it into low two. And we're just going to let the vehicle do the climbing for us. My foot is not on the brake. It's not on the gas. Just letting it crawl up. And I can see the screen here where I can watch my wheels. So concern, I, I really have to be dead center on this because of the uh, brake over. And of course, what crawl control is doing is it's using throttle, it's using brakes on individual wheel basis, and it's shuffling that power around the system uh, to make it as effective as possible. And it really does a great job. I mean, I've done it in my 4Runner. We have lots of videos showing that. And right here, it is just one of the reasons why you would pick a Toyota versus other manufacturers. 
For the MTS and crawl control, that comes with our off-road package. Whether you get it on the V6 Turbo package or on our iForce Max V6 Turbo hybrid package, you can get them both. One thing that the customers will notice that's different and new is that the crawl control in this vehicle is very silent now. And previously you'd hear a lot of the actuator banging for the, the brake control and throttling the wheels. To make our new crawl control system quieter, this is really developed within our, our brake systems with our brake actuators and our brake control logic to uh, smooth out the application force so it's not you don't hear the, the chatter as much. And then also within the drive force as well for the, uh, the engine itself. As I continue my climb, I just have to watch my sides because this is a big vehicle. And pinstriping is something you just don't want to happen. Don't know why I'm looking over the hood. I could just look at the camera here. Just not quite used to it yet. Okay, and we've cleared. On to the next challenge. So I really wouldn't call this like extreme off-road. It's more like just a over-glorified trail, but that's okay. It gives us a good first drive experience. So if you do buy an SR5 without the hybrid motor, you can add the TRD off-road package, which will give you your rear locker, crawl control, MTS. It doesn't get you the front skid plate, but you can add that as an option. So in the end, all you would be missing out on is the hybrid engine, the Fox shocks lift in the front. Ooh, it's a hot day here in Texas. Turn that fan up. I like the buttons. It's really nice that I can access all of my aircon without having to dive into the screen. It's, it's like in a truck, you want the big camera setup and physical buttons. This has all of that. We're continuing on in four low. It's kind of rough, but nothing that we haven't experienced before with uh, in crossovers. surprised they left a lot of stumps and stuff for us to go around once I go over 10 miles per hour the camera cuts out but once I'm under 10 it cuts right back in half ton trucks are not my first choice when it comes to uh, driving off-road and simply because of their size however a camera system can really help mitigate that size penalty by providing you much better visibility uh, than you might otherwise have so because Toyota designed this course, they're telling me to stop, shift into four high, and do downhill assist control. Gotta go into neutral to shift into four high. Come on. Okay, now we're in four high. Now I can hit DAC, downhill assist control. It's now turned on and I can go into drive. I can just turn this dial and it'll let me pick whatever speed I want up to 18 miles per hour. The minimum, however, is only three. I would really prefer it to go as low as one, one and a half, but I guess the crawl ratio just doesn't work on this truck. Oh well, three miles an hour it is. So now I'm gonna take my foot off the brake, crank it up speed just a little bit. Ooh, it's a windy downhill descent. Honestly, this just isn't that steep. It's not that big of a deal, but we'll make it work. Again, it's about testing features, not being extreme, right? Uh, so it looks like Toyota has set up a log course for us, which is a nice thing to have. Uh, let's go ahead and test out MTS. So I'm gonna put it into four low, to put it into neutral. Now lock that transfer case in. And I'm not gonna put on the rear uh, diff yet. I'm going to just put it in MTS and let's pick, ooh, we got rock, mud, sand, and auto. Let's do, let's do auto, see what that does. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing auto is a lot like a track possibly. So right now I'm gonna line up the log with the camera. On the outside, we'll see how well this articulates and also how wheel power is distributed. So I haven't even engaged that rear locker yet. So I think the question is, is if you are going to attempt something like this, do you even need that rear locker? Because so far, uh, I haven't even really 
heard MTS do anything yet, and historically MTS is really loud. It's like chunk, 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 chunk. Okay, well, those logs were pretty easy. But what's new with the MTS system in this next generation Tundra, it's the first time that we're offering it in our full-size product. And previously, it's been in our Tacoma, and some of the features are in our SUVs. The thing that's really special about the MTS for this vehicle is we've integrated in uh, engine control. Not only is it braking control, but also it's drive force with the with powertrain integrated. That's brand new for, for this generation Tundra. The other uh, interesting thing is, is in our uh, older system on the Tacoma, it's only offered in the four low, but in Tundra, we've brought it up into the four high realm. So we can operate it both in four high and in four low for different terrains. Uh, but now we got some ditches. So let's, let's run some ditches. We all like ditches, right? I'm gonna try to line up and let's see how this articulation works. So first wheel in the ditch, second, and then we should lift up right about here. Now MTS is doing its job. Do you see the wheels doing their thing on the outside? This is where that MTS is using braking to shift power around the system. Now we're super tilty. And I wanna just stop here and see what MTS does as I put my throttle in. Basically, it functions like a front and rear differential, but using wheel brakes, which is kind of cool. It kind of negates the need for a rear locker, although there are some very particular cases where a rear locker is superior. And that's my look at the all new 2022 Toyota Tundra. It is a great truck. I mean, this is good at doing truck stuff. Now, is it good enough to steal sales away from the F-150? I don't know, that hybrid is pretty darn compelling. But if you're looking for a basic truck that does all the truck things you need and you want a really kick butt off-road system with MTS and crawl control, the new Tundra TRD Pro might be the one you've been waiting for. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching.